Uh, welcome back. Uh, first of all, the British press focusing on whether or not the UK should join the US-led airstrikes on the Islamic State group in Iraq. Absolutely. That's what lawmakers are set to vote on today. And according to most papers, though, it's pretty obvious that the UK is going to join in the fight. Let's take a look at the Independent today. They talk about how the Royal Air Force is to start within a couple of days. But this conflict, it reminds us, is expected to last years in a region that's riddled with sectarian hatred and awash with weapons. So the Independent wonders, does Britain really know what it's letting itself in for? Has Prime Minister David Cameron really thought through its plan? And in another article, The Independent says that on the eve of yet another war in Iraq, is the UK's strategy any more coherent than in 2003? Now, Patrick Coburn for The Independent isn't really convinced, and he has this great quote from the boxer Mike Tyson, he says, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, now, Cameron says that he has learned the lessons from the past. Geopolitics made simple. <laughs> Very simply, in one little quote there. Cameron says he's learned the lessons from the past, especially from uh, UK's uh, military invasions in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. But according to Patrick Coburn, he failed to mention the military intervention in Libya. And Patrick Coburn says that this uh, military intervention in Iraq, the one that's probably going to happen very soon, is actually very similar to the one in Libya that was billed as a humanitarian intervention. But three years later, Libya is in permanent chaos, so it doesn't really bode well for the future. As some of the other papers you've been reading focus more on the moral dilemma facing Western countries. That's right. The Guardian, in their editorial today, uh, says that the most fundamental question that a UK lawmakers should be asking themselves is whether we, Britain, the United Nations, or all Western nations, should be in the Middle East at all. According to this editorial, we've done much harm over the past two centuries, whether it's using uh, the Middle East resources, rearranging its borders. Isn't it time we were gone? Well, The Guardian says, in the broad, long term, the answer to that question is yes, but in the short run, we can't stand by and watch as a great civilization goes down. That being said, The Guardian says it's important to note that any military campaign, the purpose of that military campaign, uh, should be to buy time for local states to find a local solution to what's going on there in the region. Speaking of local solutions, regional solutions, some papers are also focusing on the role that Turkey should be playing. That's right. The Independent, in their editorial, says, Turkey, we need you. Uh, it's time for Turkey to throw its weight into the fight. Uh, if Turkey steps in and unleashes what is NATO's second largest army against the jihadists, this could really tip the balance. And according to this editorial, it's really in Turkey's interest to do so, because after all, no country can be comfortable living next door to a group whose savagery knows no bounds. That's what The Independent says. Uh, now, you can see here Hurriyet, the uh, Turkish paper, points out that the uh, Turkish president is actually, well, reportedly considering offering his country's backing in this uh, U.S.-led coalition. And in the meantime, uh, Ankara says it's ready and willing to implement a U.N. resolution to prevent foreign fighters from joining in the insurgency. So you can read that there on the front page of Hurriyet, because after all, Turkey has been drawing a lot of criticism for not stepping into the fight. All right. Um, American papers focusing on something totally different. Uh, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder's decision to resign. That's right. Now, this is wasn't a surprise. A lot of papers saw this coming. So a lot of papers today are paying tribute to his legacy. You can see here in the New York Times, they point out that with nearly six years on the job, uh, well, he was the longest serving cabinet member. So in its editorial, the New York Times pays tribute to his legacy and points out that, you know, he was facing a lot of opposition in Congress. So he did a pretty good job given the circumstances. And finally, we have just a few seconds left. Fans of Che Guevara can show off their love with more than a T-shirt. That's right. Uh, the uh, slate is calling this eau de révolution. Uh, basically, it's, it's a perfume. Cuba, it's a perfume. <laughs> uh, Cuba's biggest producer of herbal products has come up with a perfume to pay tribute to Che Guevara. It's called Ernesto. Uh, now, it doesn't smell like cigars and sweat. It, it smells like wood and citrus and talcum powder. And they also have another <laughs> perfume. Uh, guess what? It, 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 it's called Hugo. So guess who it's paying tribute to? Hugo Chavez, the former uh, late uh, Venezuelan president. This one is softer and fruitier with hints of mango. All right. Smelling the revolution. Thank you very much, Florence Villemineau. Um, we're going to take a very short break. We'll be back in just a moment with another edition of World News here on France 24. And we'll be meeting up with Shona Bhattacharya who is touring Paris all week long, bringing us the faces of Paris here on France 24.